<laughs> getting your work done. Um, it, took, it took a while. I had a long list of names. I went through everything multiple times and then eventually had to kind of narrow everything down. Um, so I have, we have a top person after much deliberation, um, but a couple other people I also wanted to, to call out quick um, that, that were in the top, top list at the very end. So I'm just gonna go through those and then I'll announce the final person. Um, I will, let's see, I think the best way to do this would be to share my screen and then I can show the work on Instagram. Um, does that sound good, Jim? Okay. Um, so I'm just, I just have to pull up my list here. Hold on a second. Please forgive me if I don't, if I say your name wrong, please feel free to correct me also. <laughs> um, um, okay. So again, Obviously, I'm seeing, I'm getting a very outside glimpse of your work through a probably unexpected medium. Um, so it's a testament to how your work is coming across, even on this, this small screen space that, that it's speaking so well, um, despite the circumstances. Um, so first, I wanted to call out, oops, I'm going to share my screen one second. <laughs> okay. There it is. I wanted to call out Nicole Gutierrez. I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, I thought your, your project was just so interesting and conceptual and clever the way, um, I don't even understand, I'm not sure what the, you know, the assignment was exactly, but from the outside, um, seeing your assembled collages here and then the way you really kind of turned it into this very interactive, almost performative commentary on, um, visual language and kind of visual criticism, I thought was so interesting, especially how you you kind of reanimated John Berger, Berger <laughs> um, on Instagram and you're really kind of bringing his critical perspective to life in a really contemporary context. I thought that was so interesting. So congratulations, Nicole. She's not here, Francis. Oh, I'm but, sorry. Um, okay. I'll tell her. She's in my class. I'll tell oh, her. Oh, yeah. is that Christina? Yes, yes. Oh, good, okay, great. I hope, oh, we're recording, so that that's, will be passed on. Wonderful, yes. wonderful okay. work. Um, okay, next up, um, I wanted to call out Kat Quinoni. I hope I'm also saying your name right. Um, if you're here, <clears throat> um, Jim had explained a little bit to me about this project, but um, I got to watch the whole video and I thought it was just so wonderful and playful how you, interacted with the pages um, and you made it, it was so much about the process as well as the end product. Um, I thought the drawings at the end were really interesting, but just the way you, you made a whole performance piece out of, out of the drawing assignment um, was just like wonderful and delightful to see. Um, so congratulations, Kat. Thank you. Um, since you're here, do you want to say a, a word or two about your project? I don't mean to put uh, you on the spot. You don't have to. Sure. <laughs> it was, it was a really fun uh, exploration of like drawing through restriction because that was a project in of itself. Um, also, I think <laughs> probably my bad. I think I forgot to put an S in my own last name. It's Quinones. <laughs> oh, okay. That's hilarious on me. <laughs> but the art project in and of itself was really fun to explore. Uh, trying to make art while physically restraining myself in some way. Uh, and it just so happened to coincide really, really well with uh, an idea that I had with basically making it about my friend leaving Hofstra for something bigger and better than he could get here at the time. And basically I got to mix him outgrowing us with the idea that I can't make the same drawing as I get taller um mm. it was also just really funny because i'm very short so it was fun to try and get taller and taller uh and make that the irony of it as well but yeah oh that's great i can relate i'm also pretty short <laughs> <laughs> great um that's great to hear that extra kind of context and background to you around the project um it was just yeah i think that turning the, pr the process into part of the pro the artwork is was such a nice interesting way to approach it yeah, uh, I felt like you delightful. needed to see the growth of exactly how high it was getting to truly mm -hmm. understand the restriction of itself. Yeah, so great. Um, 
Okay, thank you, Kat. Um, next up, um, calling out Emily Rivera, who I know we, we just called out earlier. Um, I thought your photography was just so beautiful and really captured some um, lovely intimate moments. I, I, again, I don't, I'm speaking from the outside, don't know a lot about, um, you know, the, the assignment or, or your project at large, but um, just really got a sense of this sort of intimate family experience. Um, just really beautiful compositions, really nice craft and technique. Um, and thought they really, really stood out in all of those ways. I love this picture at the end with all the bubbles and just people on their phones and this kind of um, the open uh, car trunk <laughs> piece. Um, I just thought they were really well done. Um, so congratulations, Emily. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, do you want to say a word or two? Again, you don't have to, not to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like this, like, because all these I've, I took during quarantine for my projects with Professor Ray. Um, this is mostly for the final project and we were t discussing portraits. Um, so I tried kind of being like a fly on the wall and like followed my family around and just hiding behind things and trying to capture everyday life while we're trying to get through quarantine. So oh, that was the inspiration behind that. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah, you really you get a sense of some kind of narrative and um, yeah, this beautiful lighting, and, um, really nice. All right, congratulations, Emily. Um, next up, almost at the end, I wanted to call out Jillian Lamana. Um, Jillian, are you here? Hi, I'm here. <laughs> oh, good. Um, I thought your project was so, so great. I love your, your paintings technique and style. Um, one thing that was really nice about looking through your work in this sort of constricted medium is seeing how much of a body of work it is and how everything feels very much of a piece. Um, you know, even though we have all these different projects, um, getting to see them all kind of individually in the slides and then together at the end. Um, and the way you're using the found objects in this really like abstract way, um, the, the sort of relationship between the paint marks and the objects and these little glimpses of um, kind of, you know, adver contemporary advertising language, the way you're juxtaposing all of those things together in this, in this, these compositions, I just thought was so engaging. And I, I really want to see these in person and, and um, look at them more closely, see them bigger. And um, yeah, I just thought you did some really great, great work with this. Um, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Do you have, do you have a couple words? Um, I mean, this was, this was a different project for me. Most of my work, uh, I, most, I mostly work in just like regular paintings, but this was a really fun um, series I got to do uh, thanks to Professor Lee who assigned us, you know, this, this random project. We were like, oh, make 14 collages by like two days from now. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I guess I can do that. <laughs> so uh, I guess I, once I started making them, I just liked making them so much that I just made a whole bunch of them and turned into a whole show. <laughs> yeah, they're great. There's the colors, the composition, the materials, the objects, the way the paintings just feel like very, um, the compositions work really well the way you photograph them, but, they, but they're also sort of very loose and expressive. Um, yeah, really nice, really lovely. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so yes, congrats, Jillian. Um, all right, and the final, after very much deliberation, I had a much longer list too. I know there's just not, not enough time to, <laughs> to go through everybody. Um, and again, I think you guys, I just saw so much great work um, up on Instagram. Um, but after much deliberation, I um, decided the top, the top award um, should go to Lu Yang Gan. Um, again, just seeing your project from the outside, the images really, really resonated with me. I'm, I live in Brooklyn. I, you know, these scenes are very familiar, I'm sure, to many of you guys. Um, but the, just the way you took these photographs, they have a sort of documentary um, style. Um, they really capture the moment we're in, I thought, in a really beautiful way that, that just um, elevates it a little bit and for me helps me um, look at the pandemic 
through through your eyes and also just seem to touch on this broader cultural, political, social moment we're in in a really beautiful way, really thoughtful, um, reflective, but also very kind of real. Um, so I just thought they really, <clears throat> especially, you know, the context we're in right now, it's just the way you kind of probably had to pivot pretty quickly and capture what was going on around you is, is no small feat. Um, so I thought they were really wonderful the way you've captured this sort of very, very kind of <laughs> real, real scenes um, and, you know, all the details of, of our lives right now <clears throat> and let them kind of come through in the photographs, um, the way you've used sort of blurriness and motion against, you know, a sharper focus to, to really talk about the sort of, you know, communicates these sort of deeper cultural um, upheaval issues we're going through too. Um, I thought just conceptually, formally, and also kind of politically or socially, culturally right now, it kind of um, hit a lot of marks in those ways. So congratulations, Liu Yang, great work. Um, are you here? I hope you are. Oh, yes, I'm here. Thank oh, you. Oh, good. You want to say a word or two? Uh, I just want to say thank you to Professor Ray for everything she taught me and she's leaving now. I'm very sad that's not going to happen. Is Professor Ray here? Hi, Mike. Congratulations. I'm very, very proud of you. Sorry, I'm getting a little foot clipped. <laughs> He's, he's an incredible student. I've had him over and over again, and this work is superb. He pushes himself. He was really hard on himself when the pandemic started in terms of, sorry if I'm jumping in, but Please. he was negotiating his own personal safety and the compulsion to follow his inspiration, particularly of the Magnum photographers, which I then took that from him and turned it into one of our assignments. So thank you, Mike, for you know, adding to our curriculum once we were working online. Um, but I also want to point out that I, I can be a little bit of a micromanager with my students and their edits. And I gave Mike some feedback about what to post, but I like that the fourth image is he pulled, you know, pulled out of his work and put it in. That was not something I mentioned. And I always like that they don't listen to me completely. And um, <laughs> they, brought, you know, you have to rely on your instincts and you know, Mike knows what, is great photography and I'm just super excited for him and everything he's gonna do. So anyway, it's been a pleasure having him many times over. Mm -hmm. Nice job, Mike. Yeah, congratulations. This is a, I love this image. I, was, I thought it was very powerful. Thank you, thank you again. Yeah. Um, all right. Francis, can I jump in here real quick? Yes, shall I stop? I I'll stop my screen share. Oh, no, you could just stay with it. Okay. I, I just really wanted to uh, jump in here for a moment um, because you'd said something just a second ago about capturing a moment when you were introducing this. And I, th I think that was just fantastic because, you know, I think that is, you know, what, what not only this book is about, but all, the whole semester has been about that. But not even that. It's just the way Hofstra seems to be oriented and the, the, the thinking behind our institution uh, in, in, in our area in particular, um, I, I wanted, uh, I, I, I was remiss, I, I, I uh, uh, missed an award that I was supposed to give out, but I think it's a great transition here because it's, it's this idea, like you're just talking about the, the thinking behind the culture that, 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 that uh, uh, Lu Yang is, is dealing with and, and we're all dealing with and, and wherever we're living right now. And however we're we're thinking about it, but we're also so we're researching our areas. We're we're thinking about how we're dealing with and coping with things. So it's always about research and design in the fine arts, and I think that is something that we have to always remember, especially you know in a time like this. The liberal arts. I mean, research and design is so so inter interwoven, and so I want to um, point out that we have a design and research award. And that this year, that research and design award goes to Eliza Mosman. So, uh, Eliza, are you around to, to accept your design and uh, research award? Hello, I am around. Hi. Do you have anything Hi. to say about uh, what, what do you think about it, what's going on in your world right now? 
What are you thinking about? I mean, I am like so incredibly fortunate to be in the position that I'm in because my family is very safe and happy and healthy and I'm very safe and happy and healthy. So like that has just given me an opportunity to really delve into design and understanding what makes design design. And I'm very grateful for Professor Klinkostein and Professor Gabrielle and Janelle who just helped me so much. So thank you so much. Woohoo, Eliza. Thanks. Yay. So Francis, yeah, I guess that'll be the transition into you. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop screen sharing for a sec. <laughs> um, amazing work guys, really all of you. There were so many other, other beautiful paintings, sculptures, photographs, drawings and techniques. And like when I got to hear some of the stories from Jim too, I was just so moved by how some of, some of the like constraints you guys found yourself in pushed your pushed you to find new ways to draw and make stuff in really wonderful, interesting ways. Um, so that was so great to see. And I think that's such a strength that we have despite how hard and, and uncertain <laughs> things are right now. And it's so um, encouraging and inspiring to see that, like you guys finding ways to respond to all this stuff. Um, okay. So, uh, Jim, how much time do we have? I'm, I just want to be cognizant of... of... You, you want to go 15 minutes? Yeah, yeah. I'll speed through. I have a presentation um, I mean, you of, can go of work. Long, but I don't want to pressure you too much. Yeah, well, I don't want to also keep everyone on the screen for too long. So I'm, you know, open to, like, speeding okay. it up. And I might, I might skip through a couple of things. Um, uh, so please, if you, you want, want me to slow down, let me know, you want, huh? Do you, you want any reaction of it or you just want to wait for questions at the end? Oh, um, yes, questions during, if anyone wants to uh, ask a question while I'm going through, just unmute yourselves and, and speak up, um, absolutely, or tell me to slow down or <laughs> tell, tell me to speed up. All right, fantastic. Um, okay, let's see, let me just get my thing up here. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I might, I might skip over a project or two just so we don't go too long. So bear with me. Okay, can you guys see this black Looks dynamite. Francis Farr presentation? <laughs> um, and if I do this, can you still see it? Yep. Full screen? Awesome. Okay, great. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, I'll just introduce myself a little bit more. Thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you for this opportunity, Jim. Um, thank you for letting me be part of your ceremonious final <laughs> end of year celebrations. Hello, uh, my name is Francis Farr. Um, I'm going to just talk, talk about myself really quick, show you guys some work that I've done in the past. Um, and please, if you have questions, Totally unmute yourself, interrupt me, we'll make it casual. You don't have to wait until the end. Um, especially this format can drag on, I know, if one person's doing all the talking, so please interrupt me. <laughs> um, I'm happy to, happy to, yeah, have that happen. Okay, so very quickly, uh, a little background. I told, mentioned I'm, I'm a graphic designer. I went to school at Pratt and got an MFA. I had Tom Klinkostein about 10 years ago. Um, when I was a student there. Um, I am a twin. I was born in Englewood, New Jersey in 1980, which makes me only 20 years old. Um, here's some pictures of me with my twin. We've always been very identical. This is an accidental um, oh, a time. We're, we're not seeing that one, Francis. Oh, you don't see it. Oh, no. Can you your see slides, this? Your, your slides aren't moving. Oh, you know what it is? I think it's because page. it's a Full screen. Yeah, it doesn't work Dude. on full screen. Okay, hold on a sec. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> okay. Let me tr let me do something a little different. I didn't mean to interrupt, but oh please, please, please! I, I would better, hate it if I went through the whole way. thing <laughs> that way. Um, okay, I'm gonna try it again. Let's see. Uh, Francis, can I just interrupt for one yes, second Tom. while you're getting set up there? I just yeah. want to say. Thank you to Dean Rifkin for joining us. He joined us by text a few minutes ago. He may or may not be here still, but I just want to say thank you to Dean Rifkin for all your support. Yay! Yay. 
Um, okay, Francis, go ahead. Okay, thanks, Tom. Can you see this now? Slides changing? It says hi. Yeah. Hi, and now it says about me. Yeah. Good, okay, mm -hmm. great. Sorry about that. <laughs> thanks for letting me know. Um, so I'm a twin. Um, I was born in Englewood, New Jersey. Um, here are some pictures of me with my twin. Um, we have been very identical for most of our lives, all of our lives. Um, I also have an undergraduate degree in painting um, from Hampshire College in Massachusetts. And I, I do art stuff on the side, but not as much as I used to, which is partly why I appreciate so much seeing this whole range of, of work you guys have made. I'm now a designer. I've been a designer for about 10 years. Um, again, I went to Pratt. Uh, I had Tom as a teacher. Um, this is a really messy uh, design desk space at one of my recent jobs. <laughs> so you can see, get an inside glimpse of what being a designer looks like. <laughs> um, I also teach. I've um, been teaching for about five years. Um, I've been a lecturer, guest critic, and teacher at a couple different institutions, uh, Pratt, Pratt pretty consistently. I've also started teaching at RISD two year, a year ago. Um, been some other places too. I really enjoy teaching. Um, <clears throat> and who knows what the future will bring because this is a crazy world um, and with a lot of uncertainty, but I hope more wonderful stuff. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk really briefly about design also, since I know not all of you are designers. Some of you are studying to be designers. Um, but just to introduce a little bit you know, some ideas about design. Um, so I really, I gravitated to design um, after, after my undergraduate degree um, because it was so multidisciplinary and I really didn't want to have to decide and make a choice to study only photography or only painting. Or, you know, it always felt too restrictive. Um, and I really love being able to have that flexibility and fluidity to work in a lot of different mediums. A lot of different processes. Um, so, you know, photography, motion design, typography, making print physical objects, um, digital design or interactive design are all kind of part of what I do and what is, what is so interesting um, about design, being a designer. <clears throat> um, I like how it really involves both left brain and right brain thinking. I've always really loved visual work, but I also really love language and, you know, sort of more critical visual studies. Um, so all of the different processes besides just making visual work um, that I get to do as a designer. So thinking, reading, researching, reflecting, strategizing, writing, organizing, collaborating. It's a very, very, very collaborative discipline. So often, you know, you're working really closely with people to figure out what they need and how to help them and how to kind of work together to make something happen. Um, I love it when I get to advocate for people as a designer, um, teaching people as a designer, learning a lot as a designer. Um, so those are all wonderful parts of the profession. Um, lastly, <clears throat> um, you know, it's kind of an, I see it as an opportunity to always be learning and as a way to um, think about what's going on right now in the world and really engage with it in a creative way, um, which is something we kind of mentioned earlier. Um, so yeah, I, I sort of see design as a tool to be able to investigate and understand our contemporary context, the world we're living in right now and what kind of ideas are embedded in that context um, and how we think about the future. Um, so I'd like to think about design as a way to help us better understand or practice um, some of these other ideas that kind of exist outside of design, but are still part of our world. Um, so like political issues, um, you know, social cultural issues. I'm really interested in feminist theory, um, capitalism, <laughs> capitalist <laughs> critique of capitalism, critical theory, radical pedagogy. Um, so all of those other ideas I try to really think about how as a designer I can engage with some of the concepts in these bigger ideas, um, bigger um, disciplines. Um, okay, so again, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go through this these pretty quick. Um, there's a variety. There's about I have five projects, but some I have are kind of long, so I'm I'm gonna talk fairly quick, and I may skip over one or two. Please interrupt me if you have any questions. Just unmute yourself and just go ahead. I I won't mind at all. Um, so I'm gonna show you a print work, digital work, environmental, experiential design, um, a photo shoot thing, and then maybe a book at the end if, if we have time. Um, 
Okay, everyone okay still? Yeah. Um, okay, so I've worked a lot as a designer with another university called The New School, which is in Manhattan. Um, and they have a really interesting kind of visual uh, aesthetic, um, visual system. So recently I had, I got to work on this it may sound a little bit <laughs> dry from the outside, but um, they have to create all these view books they send out to new students um, to entice them to come to the new school and let them know how creative and you know rich and like diverse and multidisciplinary the new school is. So I had to create this whole suite of printed books that communicated that idea um, through a, call it like a visual system. We have to come up with like a look and a feel and a, a tone and language that all sort of revolves around this idea of um, uniting this a diverse, they have many different programs, many colleges within the new school. So we had to unite a diverse range of colleges and reflect a rich, expansive, multidisciplinary learning landscape through a suite of printed materials. So I'll show you what that means because that's like very wordy. Um, <clears throat> this is, like this I'm stuff? sorry. How do, you what? Get a, how do you get a gig like this? Did you apply for it or did they seek you out? Um, I had, it was all through our friends, I think. I had a friend who knew someone who worked there and they were looking, I'm a freelancer, so they were looking for freelance designers and I was like, oh, I'll do it. <laughs> and, and I just had an interview and, and ended up working. I've done, worked a bunch with them um, okay. over the years. Just it was like, has been a nice uh, partnership. Um, but yeah, they're a great institution. Um, so we created this whole system. They have a kind of unique, uh, we call it like a visual identity. You can see this typeface in the upper right corner is kind of stretched out horizontally and a little bit wonky. They have um, their, their, the three different widths for each letter of the alphabet and they populate randomly in a word. So you get this kind of unconventional, slightly weird looking um, letters. Um, that we use a lot. <clears throat> they have a very restricted color palette that we had to stick to. We could only use red, white, black, and silver. Um, so you can see everything is red, white, black, and silver. Um, we had a whole bunch of photography we could we got to use. But we came up with this concept of um, a space for making, um, and we really wanted to reference how how much interdisciplinary work there is at the new school. Um, how students get to kind of you know think broad, very broadly, make all kinds of different connections and kind of find their own way, choose their, d design their own majors in some cases. So we wanted the view books to reflect this sort of like textured space where things were overlapping and intersecting, kind of like a mood board, if you've ever made one of those, or a bulletin board with like lots of layers of pages and photos and text. And um, <clears throat> a lot of the materials, students students um, in, the, in the classroom or um, like, excerpts of a syllabus um, or a reading list, like material from an actual class. So everything's kind of like um, overlaid on top. So you can see some details here of the system. We had this like little bit of pretend red tape. So it looked like things were pinned to the, pinned to the page um, and little um, punched hole punches. So it felt like there was some layers and dimensionality, um, textures, text, um, you can see in the bottom right corner, that's the whole stack of the books that we designed. They all had to feel very uh, cohesive, like connected, like they all related to each other. Um, here's some spreads. Um, so there was a lot of pages, a lot of different designs. We had to figure out a way to kind of keep things organized and connected. So we had a di couple different types of pages we had to design. This is a very kind of like designer, designer <laughs> issues. So I hope this isn't too inside baseball for anybody. Um, but yeah, I designed a map. Um, there's a couple different page layouts here. The one in the top right corner is one of the sort of main look and feel pages where you can see all these bits of text and photos, sometimes like turned upside down or sideways and tape and page paper. So it feels like the page is just like has other layered pages on it. Um, this is a really fun project. We got to be pretty expressive and, and a little more experimental than um, in other cases, here's a close up of that kind of layered page I was telling you guys about. Um, so, like a, a reading list, a syllabus excerpt, some post it notes. Um, again, another layered page, um, another picture of the stack of books. 
Uh, this was uh, a kind of more subdued page that was a little bit more just informational, so it needed to be a little bit more clean. Um, not so much layering, but just little hints of the, the layering texture thing. Um, and you can see that kind of weird type on the top where it says architectural design, the letters are all different widths. So there's like little hints of weirdness. Um, the map again, uh, this was, took a long time <laughs> to do and it kept changing, which made it more fun. Um, yeah, okay, so that's uh, first project, um, print project. Uh, again, very collaborative, um, a nice, a nice um, chance to, you know, find a way to be expressive within a, a fairly constrained system, um, constrained color palette, constrained format, um, constrained messaging, but really trying to push, push it against the system and find ways to do something um, new, feel that felt new. Um, this is a web project. I'm just going to go through quick. Again, this was for the same client, the new school. Um, we we was focused around asking really big, profound questions. It was to promote their graduate programs. Um, so we were, we mostly were trying to think about what does it what does it look like or feel like to ask a profound question? What should that look like visually? How can we like communicate the sort of gravity and power of asking big questions? Um, so we came up with this little animation system for this idea of how a question can really transform everything or shift the way you see the world. So you can see on the left, um, these are the frames on the top left corner. Uh, there, a question appears and then the question mark comes on and <clears throat> it uh, animates from black to white and then you get the, the messaging about the new school. Um, but so this was a really fun project where we just kind of got to play with this animation um, and I'll show you there's a quick um, this is like a little animation of the website so the the background transforms and then these the spiral graph question thing um, kind of loosens up and gets all weird and messy and, and uh, lose, uh, disorganized and it comes back together so it's kind of like constantly changing um, yeah, and this is just a little screen capture of, of the website that we ended up designing. We had to make a whole bunch of different websites, almost all identical for all the different schools and programs. So it was just, again, coming up with like a system um, that revolved around this idea of a big question. And again, you can see that weird type at the bottom of the page. Um, okay, oh, here's another sort of screenshot of, of all of the materials for this campaign. Um, yeah, so that's a very, you know, two kind of pretty sort of standard design projects. Um, let's see, are we still okay on time, Jim? I think we're okay. Okay. Um, so this project was a little bit different. It was a like environmental and spatial design project and well, digital experiential environmental. Um, and I worked with a, a whole team of people. So it wasn't just me, I worked with an architect a strategist um, and had some junior designers also helping on the project because it was a lot to pull off. Um, it was a, um, a project for a, a nonprofit called StoryCorps. I, some of you guys might know them. They travel around the country um, recording stories, people's stories, individual stories about their own lives. Um, they have an Airstream, th or, they originally just would travel around in an Airstream trailer, which they transformed into a recording booth. Um, and they would invite people when they rolled up to your town, they would make an announcement and people would um, join, uh, sorry, could come in and, and sh record their stories and they go into this big kind of national archive. Um, so this project was to promote, <laughs> it's a little complicated. Um, they had just created an app that won a big prize so we, we had to create this whole sort of interactive experience that was ultimately about promoting this new app for recording stories. Um, and it was at a TED conference. Some of you guys might've heard of TED conferences. Um, so we had to create this whole experience kind of as a, you know, drum, drumming up excitement for the app and, and um, what, the, what you could do with the app. And so the, the whole project revolved around this idea of listening and how to get, um, 
how to get uh, people to slow down, stop, and really like engage with stories or, or listen to stories in a new way. Um, so this is a picture of the uh, installation. It's, it has a bunch of complex parts, so I won't I try to just explain it quickly. Um, there was a booth in the upper left corner where you could go in. This is all at the TED conference space where there's tons of people and all these different kind of events and things you can interact with. Um, so we had this section of the big conference space where we set all these, all these um, structures up. Um, so the booth, you could go into the booth and record a story on your own or with a friend. Um, and then the bottom right, there are these other little um, interactive um, things you can do. The top right, um, you can see there are these little screens on this table surface. Those were a game we created. And then the bottom right, um, there's a, they, we call them listening booths where you could go and listen to other people's stories and record your reaction to them. Um, so this is another view of the space. You can kind of see a little bit more. Um, this is a little identity system sponsored by Citibank. <laughs> um, the booth and then the, the table with the games and the other listening booths. Here's some, a picture of people engaging with one of the first things we built, um, a booth where you can listen to other people's stories. And you can see people, this woman on the right has her hand in a little box. Um, we created a, a sort of interactive experience where you can put your hand on a hand sensor while you're listening to a story and um, the hand sensor will read your pulse and then at the end spit out a little uh, graphic of how your pulse was changing as you listen to the story. So sort of like a little emotional metric of, of um, how you are feeling. So this is a close up of like the screen and experience you can see on the top right, um, the, uh, the little changing graphic shapes are, are um, correlate to like how your pulse was changing. Um, so we called it your brain on stories and we designed all these different um, you know screens to kind of walk you through the the listening experience uh, so that was one of the things we made this is a uh the game table and um, we created a really quick uh kind of fun interactive game where you had to guess uh a name of a story uh in only four icons so we, we came up with a list of 100 kind of well-known stories from movies, fairy tales, history, um, and we tried to reduce them all to sets of four icons. Um, and then, so you would flip through a bunch of these sets of four icons and try to guess as many as you could. Um, actually, I can't remember what this one is on the right, but the one, the bottom left corner, um, there's four icons, a ship, two people, an iceberg, and one person. And you can see the little green, uh, highlight around the Titanic. So that was that was one of the stories we created. We, we tried to um, reduce to like a really, really simple <laughs> narrative, perhaps too simple, but... Um, I like that so the iceberg kind of looks like a shark fin. <laughs> it could be, I guess it could be another story about sharks too, yeah. It could be Jaws. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not, maybe not the best representative of icebergs. <laughs> Um, so this is a really fun, it took a lot of work to figure out how to condense all these stories into four icons. It's quite a challenge. Um, some are easier than others. And then again, this is the booth, the, the third part where you could go into a booth and listen and um, have a conversation with somebody and record a story. Here's a picture of some people in the booth. Um, okay, um, so yeah, that's three projects. I can. I can, sh I'll go show one more and then I think that probably will be good. Um, all right, so that I just wanted to show a whole range of stuff. Um, print work, digital work, experiential and interactive design. This was a really fun project that um, uh, I got to work on at, at an agency I was, I was working at a couple of years ago. <clears throat> Um, for Pantone, I'm sure some of you, at least designers, probably are familiar with Pantone swatches. Um, they kind of like own color. <laughs> they, they, um, you work with these like color books as a designer and you have to, to find the right color to, uh, you know, use for a project or to match. You'll have like a brand, a visual system where there's like a very particular shade of green and you have to make sure that green appears the same most of the time. So. They're the ones that provide the, the formulas um, to get the colors right that you're working with in design. Um, 
So they do a campaign called Color of the Year. They pick one color every year. Maybe you guys have seen this, some of you. Um, <clears throat> they choose one color to be the color. Um, and they usually do a bit of a campaign around it. They want to bring it to life. They want people to get excited about this color and how they could use it in their own design work and um, to kind of celebrate the color. So they came to the agency I was at um, and asked us to kind of build out an imaginary world or space um, that, the, that is kind of the color embodies and to bring it to life visually. So that's like a really, was a really fun and kind of unusual project to get to you as a designer to just like someone say like take this color tell us you know what would you think the world of this color looks like um so the color was marsala which was a kind of interesting tone um it was sort of like this brick red mauve um muted yeah dusty red color um so we did a lot of like research and thinking and um they decided they wanted it to like wine was was the main thing they wanted to, people to kind of associate with the color. So we built this whole campaign. We came up with this, the, the ask was to do a big photo shoot. So they would have all of these photographs to use to kind of roll out and show people like how you could use this color and what the spirit of the color was. Um, so we had to kind of uh, organize it around wine and people coming together and cooking and kind of like earth tones and food and creativity and, and um, uh, yeah. So we, we established a bit of a color palette. Um, we kind of played around with like how to show wine in a nice way. Um, and then we came up with this whole sort of like backstory, picked the models, um, accumulated a whole bunch of different props um, and rented out a brownstone in Brooklyn <laughs> and had some models come in and pose in all these different scenes um, and like interact with each other um, to kind of show how you could use the color in all these different ways. So you'll notice the color is in the fabric. Um, it's in some of the like the paper, um, some of the props too. And that, that was really important to show the color in use in all these different ways because Pantone often sells color swatches to like fabric manufacturers. So you see a lot of fabric. Um, so this is one of the hero images um, showing uh, the wine, highlighting the color. Francis, Another one of the- Would oh. this have been seen? Would this have been like a print ad? How would this have been disseminated to the public? That's a great question. Um, <clears throat> they have, we created a website for them where all these, this, there was like a, a campaign website. Um, but then they also would roll, they would take these photos and put them in like print ads. Um, they kind of took them and used them in a lot of different ways. Okay. Yeah, usually I think mostly print ads, um, digital campaigns and things. Um, yeah, basically all, all sorts of like marketing channels. Instagram, they definitely put them on Instagram. They kind of rolled them out over time and had these like stories that went with them. Um, so this is one of the, the model shoots we had like you know, wine and cake and beautiful velvety fabrics. Um, and the clothing, the nail polish was kind of Marsala hued. Uh, so we tried to, you know, find as many ways to show Marsala without kind of like overkill. <laughs> um, but this was a really fun project. Um, a model shot, oops, this is very low resolution. Um, yeah, and that about wraps it up. I have one more project, but I, I um, let's see. I'll go through really quick. This was actually a project I did a long time ago in school. I thought I should include it at the end because it's not client work. Uh, so it's nice to not <laughs> to see outside of, you know, the client space. Um, so um, this is a project I did in grad school. I was really interested in value systems um, and thinking about what value means in very diff a lot of different senses. Um, so I created the, the background is this in a bigger installation. So my work is on the table. Um, I created this series of books that all had different amounts of pages. They were all different sizes and they were kind of looking at uh, natural resources um, and, and the quantity <clears throat> we kind of attach to a natural resource, like whether something is, is, exists in limited quantities, something is very scarce, something is very abundant, something is infinite. I was really interested in those words and how they shift how we think about you know, wealth and how much of something we, we have. <clears throat> um, 
So I created these books. This is the Abundant Water book. Um, it has about 500 pages um, <clears throat> of just pictures of water with the word abundant kind of interspersed. Um, this is the oil book, limited quantity, a little bit smaller. I think it has like 100, 100 pages, all um, pages like this with the word limited interspersed throughout them. I mean, this was a gold book. It has only five pages. It was very small. Um, so this was a project where kind of design, <laughs> I got to be a lot more kind of conceptual and explore something more, more philosophical that I was really interested in. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much for listening. Um, congratulations. Um, I know I was kind of going through fast. Um, does anyone have any questions? Any questions for Francis? I, I've got a question, Francis. Yeah, yeah. The one thing that I think, I mean, your, your, your sense of design is amazing, obviously. I mean, you've got such a great sense of it. But you, what I notice, notice even more so is maybe how you present it to us as viewers. Like, where did you learn to kind of like put things together so that it's easy to digest? not only for your clients, but for people like us that are just trying to get an inf in information from you. Well, that's really great to hear because I'm always really worried that it's, <laughs> that it's not easy to digest. So I'm glad that it, it, it was <laughs> from your perspective. Um, probably from just having, you have to talk to clients so much about your work a lot as a designer and it really forces you to figure out how to like strip stuff down to, you know, the main point and and I mean I'm still I I know I can I can be very verbose sometimes so I, I'm working on that but um, there is a it's just kind of part of the job especially getting out of school and like realizing like oh like my you know survival kind of depends on me being able to communicate well about this stuff um, you you tend to do a lot of presentations as a designer too visual presentations um, so I guess, yeah, it's sort of part of the job in some ways. Um, and teaching is also helpful to, <laughs> to figure out how to do that. But I'm glad to hear that. That's, that's really I positive always, feedback. <laughs> I say I learn way more from my students than they'll ever learn from me. So that's, that's probably yeah. a lot of times where we get it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Anybody else? Well, Before you go, I, I thought your design layout for the new school stuff was awesome. I think it was really well done and it's clear and it is precise and it's received by the viewer very well. I was wondering also, do you, you ever see the health class 2.0 uh, shirts at the new school for uh, Natalia? Say that again? The health class 2.0 t-shirts? No. The, it's just a project I worked with them a while ago. Just curious. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I have to look cool. it up. No, no, no. I just, I was just thinking of, you know, things. But you did a fantastic job. Congratulations. Thank really you so awesome. much. Thanks, thanks so much for your kind words. <laughs> Appreciate it. You guys did a fantastic job. Anybody Francis, else? maybe, Francis, this is Tom. Maybe just, hey, Tom. Um, hi again. Maybe talk for a minute about how you balance your personal research and other work with the uh, the week-to-week -week necessity of, of uh, earning your, your living and uh, how the thinking and the research and the ideation uh, crosses between those two or maybe has battles between those two parts of your mind? That's a really good question, Tom. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm sorry you had to see this presentation kind of all over again. Because I was in Tom's class last fall. All oh, right, cool. Francis presented to my class last semester <laughs> very, very successfully. Go, go ahead, Francis. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, it's a challenge. Uh, I, I think when I was working full time, maybe this is a cop out answer, but when I was working full time as a designer, it is pretty all consuming and you have to kind of find if there are things you're not getting from work, which, you know, 
there isn't as much space in, in a working environment always to pursue exactly what you want, care about. You know, there's the sort of bigger tasks that need to be done and deadlines and all kinds of things that are, you know, kind of challenging to, to figure out how to navigate um, against, you know, your own interests. So I've always found that really difficult as a designer. And I, when I, I moved to freelance about three years ago, and found I was, I had a lot more, it wasn't easy necessarily. Um, it took a while to get my footing, um, just financially and just the rhythm of pace of freelance work. But um, I found I was uh, much, had much more flexibility to spend time on, on like kind of personal projects um, alongside client work. And also when I started teaching, I find that's really a great space for continuing to think a little bit more conceptually at things that aren't so tied to kind of like day to day, like we need this by tomorrow, make, you know, we need 20 Facebook <laughs> ads or something. Um, so I, I've found that thinking about design, of course, it's important to think about it in the client context, kind of like how it's applied right now in the real world, um, but it's just so fulfilling and important to also be able to step back and think about design a little bit more broadly, philosophically, um, and conceptually. And those two things like really feed each other. And I think everyone's very different, um, you know, in terms of what, what you may, may need or what you find fulfilling creatively. But I, I've, it's been a process of like discovery and um, realizing that those, that part is also as important as, as the client work stuff. And I know I shared a lot of client work, but I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> Does that kind of answer it? Yeah, thank you, Francis. Okay. Yeah, it's really, I think, the challenge of carving time out for yourself and to, for self-directed work is not as easy because when you have people kind of giving you a task or a structure. It's easy to kind of just be like, okay, that's what I should do. So you have to sometimes make some space and figure out how to set set your goals outside of outside of that structure. But very rewarding when you can actually make it happen. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, thanks so much for having me. I'm just going to stop, stop my screen share. Well, Thank you so much for listening to, and having me. I really appreciate, yeah, you inviting me. We appreciate you. This this is fantastic. We're just winging it, obviously, here today. But I, I we all <laughs> great job with it, and I really appreciate everybody coming in here. We we had to lose uh, Carol Mallison. She was the one from Hofstra, uh, basically Hofstra Calendar, Hofstra Public Relations, kind of working together. She had to leave, so um, we're kind of on it. We could, we just go run amok now. I guess we could really tear it up. So, um, Francis, any anything you'd want to? To, to have parting words for us? Um, I just want to say I'm so impressed with how you guys pulled this all together. And I know it happened pretty quickly. And I mean, I was talking to Jim before everything went down and it was like a very quick pivot. And um, it just seems like everyone, you guys seem, you work so well together and just have produced such a wonderful like collection of, of work. And I'm just very impressed and I, yeah. Congratulations, and also, yeah, it's it's really encouraging to see how, how such a great response to this crisis, and the, it's like again very encouraging to um, I don't know just think about. I know not all of you are graduating, but those of you guys going out into the world, I really commend you for dealing with everything right now in in such a wonderful, uh, successful way. It's a really good sign. Great. Okay, everybody. I um, guess. John, could I just? Yeah, part of part of I just wanted to, because I didn't and say it before, but I just wanted to say a proper, uh, you know, 15 second goodbye. 
And um, for the last uh, 25 years, I've really had the honor of working with some extraordinary people. And I wanted to thank in particular uh, members of the photography program, uh, Susanna Ray and Margie Pilar and Mike Zweibel, uh, great teachers, all who contributed above and beyond. And uh, lastly, and most importantly, I wanna thank the dedicated, extraordinary and truly creative students because they are the reasons we are here. And so thank you all. I'm leaving Hofstra, but not the West Village. So please keep in touch. And uh, Jim, you did an amazing, I don't know how you did it really. You did an amazing job. It's a great show. Kudos to you. All right. Well, I guess- Thank you, Professor Jaffe. We're gonna miss you. Oh, I'm going to miss everybody. <laughs> I am. But keep in touch. Definitely. Thank you, Professor. All right. I'll, I guess we're going to get on our way. I have a class to teach at one o'clock. If, if you're still in the room right now, just jump over. I'll, I'll be over there. It's a figure drawing. It's our last figure drawing class of the, of the semester. Anybody else want to, Rick, you got anything to say? Anybody want to jump, give a shout out? Good job, everybody. Thanks, Rick. Miss seeing you around the, around the physical nature of the, uh, of the building. So it'd be great to see you in the fall. I know, as much as I joke about it, I miss it too. <laughs> Wonderful, Rick. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, folks. We'll see you soon. Be safe and great uh, job and good luck on your um, end, end of the semester finals, which start very soon. Um, good luck and, um, and then keep in touch. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Professor Lee. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Bye. Thank you so Thank much. You, oh, so great to see you. Congratulations, everyone. Bye. <laughs>